Warning, the following episode discusses sensitive subjects such as suicide, eating disorders, and other mental health struggles. If you or someone you know is struggling with suicidal thoughts or feelings, please contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. Hey everyone, I'm Mackenzie. And I'm Haley. We are two sisters and best friends, and we're the hosts of Real Talk About Feminism, a podcast for female empowerment. Each week, we release a new episode. We talk about everything from periods to current events. And different types of feminism to worse first dates. Subscribe on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts and tune in each week. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Real Talk About Feminism. This is episode 42. That is crazy. 42 episodes. I know. I feel like we say that every week. <laughs> I know. It's just, that is so crazy. It's so crazy to me. I can't wait till we reach 50 episodes. I know. We're really close. It's so exciting. Well, before we start, I just have to say, I just thought of this, and I'm really proud of us because we've put so much effort into like actually planning, mm-hmm. and we have some really great episodes planned that I'm super excited to record for. And like, I'm so excited to record right now because it feels like it's been forever. Yeah. So for everyone who doesn't know, because obviously you don't live our lives. um, (laughs) So Ken's was in New York, like we've talked about. And then we recorded that week. Did we have two weeks in between our trips or just one? I think it was two. I think it was two weekends. Yeah, two weekends. And then last weekend I was in Nashville. So we recorded an episode ahead of time but it's just weird because I feel like we haven't been recording in a while yeah but now we have a consistent schedule set up Mm -hmm. and it's getting like fun I don't know like it's always been fun but Mm -hmm. like I actually look forward to doing this same yeah I'm so excited I uh, was working all day and I was just thinking all day I just want to get off so that we can record like same (laughs) it's so fun at this point for us like yeah so Anyway, so what has been going on for you? This past week, I started school. Right. My classes started for the semester. I have this semester, a couple classes in the summer, fall semester, and then I graduate. <gasps> so I'm very close. I can see the finish line. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I have two in-person classes, so I was actually on campus, and that was really fun. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've missed just, like, the interaction so it was really nice, but I have a good balance still. I have a few classes online. So like that's what I was doing today. I was just doing online class homework. Mm-hmm. That's so nice. I really have not done anything other than in person. And we talked about this last episode um, or anything other than online. And so in person to me just sounds kind of scary because I'm used to just doing everything independently on my own on the computer. Mm-hmm. And I know once I get my associates next semester – and I transferred to the same school as you, Yeah. then I'm going to want to do in person. You will. And I don't know. I, I'm really proud of myself because I had like an hour and a half to kill before my first class. And I didn't get coffee, even though there was a Starbucks and a Daz box. <laughs> but like just being on campus, I was like, if I wanted to, like I could. Like mm-hmm. it just like fits the vibe. Mm-hmm. And I got to go to the library. And it was just nice to like be there. And you're downtown and I, like yeah, in the downtown. heart of downtown. Yeah. For, I guess it's kind of on the edge, but you're in Denver. Yeah. So, so. that was fun too. Like it's a new area I rarely go to mm-hmm. and I'm going to be taking the light rail. Ooh, I did that um, the semester that we switched to online in the middle because it was the first semester of the pandemic, but it was fun. It was honestly a vibe, like, but it got really cold in the mornings because you know how Colorado gets cold yeah. in the morning, even if it's warmer in the afternoon, it was freezing like I had gloves I had double socks coat yeah everything yeah but I feel like I'll just like channel like New York City subway energy yeah (laughs) I'll just like really romanticize that every morning yeah I mean you have all the the attire for it to be warm and be cute from New York so (laughs) yeah 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 so that's my big update nothing else besides school and work nice but you went to Nashville I did go to Nashville um It ended up honestly kind of, I don't want to say train wreck because I don't want to be like super negative about it, but it honestly just kind of ended up being more stressful than not. So I, we had my, our sister, she had a volleyball tournament and 
So I decided to go up on Friday and my family, the rest of the family, other than you guys, because you didn't go, Mm -hmm. but the rest of our family, they flew in really late. I think they got to the hotel room at midnight on Friday night. And so I flew in, I got there around 2.30. And so then by the time that I um, got the shuttle and went back to the hotel, then I had asked the front desk people, oh, what should I do? And turns out in Nashville, it was a Friday night and they don't have anything open like past like 4.30. That's so weird. Yeah. And so everything that I wanted to do, it wasn't open past 4.30. And so I was like, okay, that's fine. Like I can just go walk on Broadway, which is like where all the nightlife is. Mm -hmm. And so um, I ended up walking around. It was actually really fun. I really enjoyed like the solo aspect of it for that day. but at the same time, like, I, I wanted to go into a place that had live music. Right. It's but, Nashville. <laughs> yeah, it's Nashville. And I never got to see live music. I heard it, but I didn't get to see it. So I wanted to go see live music. And I was walking up and down. But they were all bars. And I didn't know when they kicked people out. You know how, like, it's, like, before 8, you can have people. But right. afterwards. And I just – it was just kind of stressful. And I didn't really feel like looking it up and trying to figure it out. And I was also by myself. And I didn't want to go into a bar. Yeah. So that was that night. It was fun. It was really fun. I took some cute pics. And then my flight got canceled that night to come home. Yeah. And so that was the first time it got canceled. I was stressed because I needed to be home on Sunday. Couldn't miss work on Monday. Slash didn't want to because I didn't want to mess up my routine. Mm -hmm. And so my flight got canceled. Then the next morning I was supposed to fly out that next morning. It got canceled. And basically, it was just this whole thing of it getting canceled and then them rescheduling it for a day that didn't work. And it was going to end up costing me way more. So I had to just buy an emergency flight back at for $300 for oh, a one gosh. way. And the way it worked out, I ended up having to spend the night in the airport. And <laughs> I've done this before. And it's it's not terrible. It's not terrible if you are able to sleep in the terminal but I had to sleep in the like where the baggage area is where you check your bags yeah like when you first walk in literally when you first walk in so I'm like crawled up by a pillar that had a charger and all I had was my purse that was actually really fun I didn't have a bag other than a purse that's so nice yeah so but then in that moment I was like wow I wish I had a giant backpack to lay my (laughs) head on as a pillow so I was laying on the floor And it was scary because there was, like, eight people when I first got there, like, five to eight people. And they were all doing the same thing, just kind of sleeping, except for this one family that was just playing cards literally the entire night. That would have been, if the whole family was there, that would have been (laughs) Yeah, they were literally playing cards. It was so funny. Um, But long story short, I was just crawled up on the floor. And it was scary because every hour or so, I would wake up to people around me talking And there would just be, like, more and more people around me. And it just made me so anxious because I was, like, I'm literally, like, sleeping in the middle of everyone. Well, why couldn't you sleep in the terminal, though? Because um, they – so they had canceled the flights because Nashville was supposed to get this huge snowstorm. And apparently they don't really get snow there. So it was, like, a big freak out. But being from Colorado, when we were leaving, there was, like, a few flurries. And I was, like, (laughs) "Um, this is not cause to uh, shut everything down. But, okay. Um. So they, because they had canceled all the other flights, like my flight was like one of the only ones that went out. I think there was three <gasps> flights. That was it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so they closed security until 3.30 in the morning. And then I got through security and then I just kind of sat on my phone until it was time to go because we boarded at 4.30. Mm-hmm. So it was a whole long thing, but I ended up making it home and I was, I, I it was just a whole long thing. So like, so, okay, so. Well, I remember you telling me, like, this just feels like Orlando. We did an episode on that whole right. crazy whirlwind of an experience. Mm-hmm. But you, like, you FaceTimed me when you guys were at, uh, what's it called? Parthenon? Oh, yeah, the Parthenon, yeah. yeah. Parthenon, yeah. Like, what were some of the fun things? Like, Sadie's tournament? Yeah, so I did get to see Sadie play for a day. That was really fun. Um, we got to, because I was really only there Friday night and then Saturday. Right. Um, so the Parthenon was really cool. And if you guys follow us on Instagram, I posted about the women's suffrage monument. That was cool. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Um, go look on the story. We'll, we'll put it in the archives. 
Um, in the highlights? Oh, yeah. In the, in the <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll put it in the highlights so you guys can see. It's actually really cool. So we saw the Parthenon. It's an exact replica of how it looks in Greece. And apparently in the middle, like, you can go inside of it. And there's a ginormous statue of the goddess Athena, which I really wanted to see. But Percy it, Jackson. Uh-huh. It was kind of expensive, though, to get in. Oh, you had to pay to go in? Are you yeah. kidding? Yeah, they so charge we, for everything. They do. <laughs> But it's a museum, so... Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So that was cool. We saw the outside of that. It was also really cold. So then after that, we ended up going to Sadie's tournament, watched her play. We had breakfast at a really local place that was really cute. That's fun. Yeah, and then that was it. So just like a, a fun weekend trip getaway. Yeah. Maybe a little overwhelming, but... Yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to be like so negative, but it, it ended up costing me like... Six hundred dollars in airfare for to be there yeah. for a day and a half, and yeah, it was just a mess. That actually does suck. It did seriously, suck. it's like I remember you telling me like it was like Orlando, which like we shelled out so much money for that mm-hmm. because our flights got canceled, mm-hmm. and then we were staying extra. Yeah, and like now this. Yeah, yeah, so I was like, okay, I really didn't need that dent in the savings, but it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was fun. It was cool to see a new city. I would definitely go back there. Um, mm-hmm. it is very focused on like. It's pretty much just like drinking. Yeah, and like it's a party city. Yeah, it is yeah. a party city. But there was lots of um bachelorette parties, lots of birthday parties, and That's everyone fun. was wearing pink and I was like, This is my vibe. Yeah. So <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. So okay, that was kind of long, but that was my trip to Nashville. Okay. Yeah, you did post some pictures. You took some really cute selfies on your tripod. Yes, I did. So you posted those on your main. On my main. I posted yeah. one. I d- posted one and then I deleted it and I posted another one. I know. I was like, oh, she posted two. Wow. But yeah. I, it. <laughs> I might post the other one later because it was cute. I just, yeah. you know, when you like post a picture and then you're like, I hate it. Never mind. Yeah. And then yeah. You delete it. So, yeah. Well, fun. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into the episode. All right. So this one, um, we're looking forward to this topic because more light needs to be shed on it. I know just with mental health in general, like I feel like. We are getting places with discussions on mental health and the stigmas that surround it, but especially with the male population, like there's just not enough, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Focus and attention on it. Mm -hmm. And like everybody deserves mental health care and mental health treatment if that's needed. And everyone should feel comfortable doing that. Yes. And everyone deserves love and acceptance and deserves to feel happy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with a feminist highlight though. It's a male because we're focusing on men this episode. Oh, I love. Yeah. So his name was John Stuart Mill. He was a British philosopher that refined utilitarianism. And for those that don't know, the definition of utilitarianism is the doctrine that actions are right if they are useful or for the benefit of a majority. In 1861, he published a piece of writing along with his wife called The Subjection of Women. And in this piece, he called for women to be liberated and be equal to men in all aspects, which, like, at this time was unheard of. Yeah. He said husbands should not control their wives and treat them like property. And a quote from one of the sources that I used said, Mill's case for women's equality reflects his utility utilitarian roots sorry i cannot say that the subordination of women he argues is not only quote wrong in itself but one of the chief hindrances to human improvement end quote by denying women the same opportunities as men he says society not only impedes the development of roughly half the population but denies itself the benefits of their talents why is such a foolish practice followed mill asks because he says our customs and laws are a carryover of the law of the strongest The fact that men are typically superior to women in physical strength leads to the presumption that men are superior to women in all areas, despite the fact that there is no proof to support this claim. In this respect, Mill says, the predicament of women parallels that of slaves. Which at that time is true. Like, no rights. Yeah. I just really liked that because... When I was looking for a feminist highlight, I was like, we should do a male. Yes. And I had never heard of that piece. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked into it a little bit more. I read some passages. It was very, very interesting, especially at that time. Yeah. Definitely, like, world-changing. Mm-hmm. So that was John Stuart Mill. I love that you did a, a guy yeah. for a highlight. Yeah. Because men can be feminists, too. Yeah. So, and we've never definitely. done that before. So I love that. 
Okay, so um, getting into what Ken's was talking about before when she introduced this episode, um, toxic masculinity and the stigma of mental health with men. In preparation for this episode, I decided that I wanted to pull my Instagram followers and just see like what people had to say. So I'm going to give you guys the results of those polls. So I'm going to read the results of those polls. The first question that I asked was, as a man, do you feel comfortable speaking out about personal mental health struggles? 81% said yes, which is good. Okay. And then 19% said no. Then the next question was, as a man, do you feel comfortable seeking mental health treatment? And 75% of men said yes. And 25% of men said no. So I think with my followers... Um, it, you know, it's obviously a very small sample size right. because if we look at bigger statistics then there's different issues that we see, but I right. think that makes me happy that the people that I know and, and communicate with, they feel comfortable talking about it. Yeah. So it is good. That means that progress has been made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so along with the polls I actually had some people also submit their thoughts so one person said it honestly sucks I haven't told my dad about any of my issues because I know that he'll look down that's That's sad sad to hear yeah Yeah. um another person said looking strong without putting the work in is exactly like injecting synthol instead of lifting weights so that's a really good analogy yeah really good analogy (laughs) deep thinker (laughs) um (laughs) And then we have kind of a longer um, submission here, but it was really insightful. So he said, I wouldn't call it toxic masculinity. I think a better name for this type of behavior would be restricted masculinity as it dictates what a man can or cannot do, what we can feel or not feel. It restricts what men are and what we can become. As a Hispanic man, this is prevalent in our culture. We are told that a man should act and dress a certain way and only display certain emotions. My father has done a good job in teaching me that a good man has these certain traits like loyalty and protecting your loved ones, but also can be more than just those things. However, he doesn't open up himself. And thus, I have had a hard time being emotionally vulnerable and intimate for a long time. And while I was able to work on myself, many many men don't do that because we're supposed to be stoic and everything else is seen as weak behavior. And that really takes a toll on us as we get older, leading to suicide at the worst. That is really insightful. Very insightful. I like how he brought in the cultural aspect of mm-hmm. like being a Hispanic man and how that adds another level to the stigma. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that later in the episode too. But Yeah, I love that um, we've been able to do a lot of learning, just the topics that we've covered, um, a lot of learning about different cultures too mm-hmm. and stigmas around different cultures and different things that are talked about in different cultures that we don't experience right and I really love that we've been able to learn and uh, we don't have that experience that this follower has and so it's really great that he's able to share that with us and felt comfortable sharing that yeah and growing up with no brothers like Mm -hmm. I've heard of families and like people that have said their parents treated their male siblings different than them as females Mm -hmm. and like I've also realized that too like we've never experienced that Mm mm-hmm so it's it's interesting. Like there's a whole different variety of people with whole different backgrounds and cultures. Right. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to give the definition of toxic masculinity. There's a lot of variations on the definition, but the one that I liked the most is the idea that men need to behave a certain way. Usually beliefs are harmful And uh, they define manhood very narrowly in terms of violence, sex, status, and aggression. And these definitions can differ with culture. um, And the stigmas that come along with this perpetuate the idea that men shouldn't cry, be scared, show emotion, show any weakness, and like even like turn to violence or aggression in some situations. Mm -hmm. Um, And then another thing I want to add is part of toxic masculinity is like men feeling the need to act a certain way because society says so. So kind of what you said about how it perpetuates the idea that men shouldn't cry, show weakness. Mm -hmm. We see that in media, like movies, books, TV shows. Like that's how a lot of men are portrayed. You don't really see men being like emotional 
right and stuff like that just in general and I also kind of um experienced that when I was working on the ambulance that was a very male dominated field and I remember distinctly my supervisor telling my the girl that we were training and one of my good friends um she had cried at the end of the shift because it was her first time not putting her daughter to bed and it was just overwhelming it was a lot of training in one day and you see a lot and so we were driving back to base and she started crying just like letting it out and our supervisor was like you're not cut out for this like you you can't work in this field because you're showing weakness like you can't do that and I think that that was very telling of him as like a supervisor and a man in a male dominated right. field like don't show weakness that's not okay and that's what increases the rates of suicide and right. depression and mental health struggles so it's that's just very really interesting sad. it was sad because we were saying like this is a field where suicide rates are so high mm-hmm. and you're telling your employee not to show emotion and to bury it down deep like how is that right that's why there's issues yeah and that's a whole different issue but it just kind of made me think like yeah that was a male dominated field and that's how the the attitude was just don't show weakness and even though you're seeing people die around you and people get really sick and injured and it's just like no you're not supposed to be affected by that at all yeah that's even more of a reason to Mm -hmm. like like it's okay you're human Mm -hmm. well and you can understand that working in hospice yeah like it's okay to Mm -hmm. show emotion like actually like families appreciate that sometimes so yeah Oh, uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was just an example I thought of, but we can It's a really going. good example. Yeah. We've talked about this before, too, but, like, I've literally witnessed, like, firsthand, like, Jared's culture and, like, how his upbringing affected – is affecting, like, his mental health. Mm-hmm. And so it's just really interesting because, like, when he's needed help, like, I've had to push him. Whereas for me, it's like, oh, like, this is just, like – common sense to me like I need to go to therapy I need to whatever you know right so it's just really interesting to like see it play out and I like we've had a lot of good conversations about it because Mm -hmm. like I he's told me like I don't want our kids to ever like feel like they can't talk to us Mm -hmm. or like don't feel like they can get help Mm -hmm. and so I'm like oh that's good like breaking generational barriers you know like it actually like is a really good feeling but it's just interesting to like see that play out and then our follower mentioned that like with his culture like that's also affected the way he views mental health yeah and he said like it affects like him being intimate yes, and in relationships yeah and, oh man that's really tough yeah that is interesting and that is good to see the things that you want to break and the yeah. thing, how you want to raise your kids that's awesome yeah, I'm like, oh, that's cute. yeah. yeah but yeah. it is interesting um because if you guys are new Mackenzie's husband is you never call me I, I only call you Mackenzie when we're doing podcasts I know, that's weird. it's so weird like literally you guys I never call her Mackenzie I always call her Ken's mm-hmm. um but her husband is half Japanese yeah sorry yeah I mentioned that yeah so it's just interesting like he had his, his mom is Japanese so he had that influence which I really like I like mm-hmm. how she brought that in and then his dad is white so he had like two different cultures. right yeah. yeah really cool yeah I remember, this is a side note, but I remember um, at your bridal shower, you got, like, really authentic Japanese gifts. Yeah, I still have them. (laughs) Yeah, and that was, like, really cool because you can pass those down to your kids. Like, it's really cool to see the differences in his culture and how he was raised. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah. Yeah, when we were living with them, too, they, so in Japan, they have a holiday called Boys Day, which I was like, (laughs) you're like, "Uh, excuse me? (laughs) No, they have Girls Day, too. But, like, it's basically just, like, a day where, like, boys like kids get like spoiled and so like (laughs) they literally like we had cake and like they got gifts and stuff like it was crazy wait that's actually so cute like I love that yeah did they do anything for you on girls day I don't remember I don't (laughs) really think so I don't remember though (laughs) maybe you weren't living there with them for girls day yeah because boys day I think is in May yeah, I don't know. But, like, I'm pretty sure, like, his mom loves me. So. Right, that's why, that's why I'm like, maybe you were yeah. there. That is so cute. I kind of want to do that. I want to have girls say. Yeah, I know. It's it cool. Just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, so I just have some fast facts about mental health in men. This is in America. So um, I haven't looked at statistics around the world, but I'm just going to focus on this country. Out of 
151,781,326 men, 6 million suffer from depression each year. Whoa. That seems like a small amount, but that's actually it's a, a lot. lot. Yeah. The five major mental health issues that affect men are depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, psychosis, slash schizophrenia, and eating disorders. That's something that's not talked about enough either, is like mm-hmm. eating disorders in men. Yeah. Because there's plenty of men that suffer from body dysmorphia, eating disorders. Yeah, that's true. I actually, like, there's a lot of uh, influencers and people with a following mm-hmm. that talk about stuff like that now. Mm-hmm. Like, I just think of Chelsea jade curtis on oh. what we said oh she, i didn't know she talks about yeah that. she um struggled with an eating disorder when she was a teenager and she talks about that but there, there's a lot of women that will speak out about it now but i don't i can't name one man that um i mean i feel like i've seen like headlines through the years of like mm-hmm. so-and-so breaks their silence on their mm-hmm. body dysmorphia or something you know like it just is not talked about. Yeah, that's the thing. It just goes to show, like, they don't, it, it's not talked about because it's not something that they feel comfortable talking about. Right. But with women, like, the body, I think that's actually interesting. The body positivity movement has been so big lately, mm-hmm. but I think sometimes people forget it's bo- body positivity for all. Everybody. Not just yeah. women. Not and just we women. really see just a lot of women embracing that, mm-hmm. but it's for men too. So that's interesting. They just don't talk about it and they, they should feel comfortable talking about it. Yeah. And maybe it's like, well, what reason do I have for like having body dysmorphia? Which like, if you're a male and you struggle with that, that's okay. That's yeah. your struggle. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like, cause like women, it's so like, everybody knows, like, I'm pretty sure like we've all struggled with that as mm-hmm. girls. So it's like, I feel like in today's day and age, unfortunately, it's, like, kind of a given that, like, you're going to struggle with that. With body dysmorphia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's just, like, a lot of young girls that have eating disorders. And so, like, for men, I could see why it would be hard to talk about that. Yeah, totally. Which is sad. Yeah. The next fact is uh, these are all dealing with suicide. Um, the highest suicide rates in the U.S. are found in white men over the age of 85, Suicide rates for men are on the rise and is the seventh leading cause of death for men in America. Gay and bisexual men are more at risk for developing mental health disorders than heterosexual men and for attempting suicide. Men are four times more likely than women to die by suicide. And risk factors such as substance abuse, unemployment, genetic predisposition, military-related trauma, and mood disorders put people at a higher risk for suicide. That was kind of quick and at a glance, but it's just so sad. Like, that's the seventh leading cause of death for men Mm -hmm. in this country. Yeah, it's extremely high. Yeah. The amount of men that commit suicide and just the amount of people in general, but it is extremely high for men. Mm -hmm. And that's why talking about it is not going to make it better, but talking about it and reducing that stigma around it it's going to make people feel so much more comfortable because they're not going to feel alone and that's one of the biggest things like you just feel alone with depression or suicide or or you know any of these like mental disorders that you talked about it just they don't want to feel alone Mm -hmm. and so talking about it could really help yeah and and it's not that easy but right right but I feel like with toxic masculinity it's like (sighs) It's, like, preached as, like, the more you repress it, like, oh, you'll just forget about it. You'll mm-hmm. move on. You're not going to think about it. Just, like, go work all the time. Go party, whatever. Just distract yourself and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Which, like, in reality, like, they're never going to go away. And so it's better to just deal with it mm-hmm. and get help. You know, at least, like, talk to somebody. Journal. Get your thoughts out. Right. You can take steps towards going to therapy or getting on medication hmm. And it really is just like, I mean, our generation has done a really good job of this and there's always lots of room to improve. But it really is just looking at that historical kind of standard that men were held at. Mm-hmm. And women were always seen as the more emotional ones and the caretakers and the nurturers and men as the strong people who never let anything in and right. never let anything phase them. And so it, it's hard because they really like as a society we really have to break that stigma and we our generation i think we really have done a good job but there's always going to be room for improvement right so yeah cuz it's like the generations before us like our our follower who gave a response that said mm-hmm. like 
he doesn't feel like he can go to his dad. Like Mm -hmm. he obviously like wants help, but doesn't feel comfortable going to the generation above. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's their stigmas that kind of perpetuate it too. Mm -hmm. So I think um, someone that is a really good example. I know to both of us um, is our dad. He is, he's a girl dad. He doesn't have any sons, (laughs) but um I know that he was raised in a way that it was kind of that same thing. Like you don't Definitely. show emotion and yeah. you just deal with your issues on your own and you suppress it. But he is, he's a really good example. And I know if I have boys, then he'll be a really good example to them. Yeah, yeah. But he is not afraid to show emotion. He tells us how much he loves us all the time. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't have that, like, sensitive, tender relationship with their dad because generally men just aren't like that. Right. And he's just a really good example of not being afraid to show emotion, not being afraid to cry if he's feeling emotional and talking about something that's really hard to talk about or really vulnerable. Like, he's not afraid to show emotion. And I think that that's such a good example and that has really taught us that, like, it is okay right. for men. And I I think that he can be like such a great example to so many other men because he's not afraid to just show how he feels and get vulnerable. And I know it's hard for him, but I just really admire him for that. Yeah, that's a really great example because he is very great at that. And like, I know like it's taken him a long time to be able to do that. And mm-hmm. I'm glad he can now. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good example. Yeah, so shout yeah. out to you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Dad. Good job. <laughs> um, all right. So as we've discussed, men are much less likely than women to seek help and treatment. And this is all just due to social norms, reluctance to talk, downplaying symptoms. It's okay. I'm fine. You know, it's just mm-hmm. work, stressful. And the reluctance to talk was interesting to me because – I feel like this is more prevalent in men, you know, because like women like talk more anyway. Like uh-huh. it's like mm-hmm. if you've literally been talking for five minutes and I've said one word, I'm like, oh, Oops. okay, <laughs> oopsie. <laughs> um, but like everyone is different, and so it's hard to say like, well, all men do this and all women do this, but mm-hmm. generally, mm-hmm. men are more reluctant to like talk about their feelings. Right. Yeah, that's true. A lot of men aren't able to work through trauma from their childhood or life in general, like as things come up because of the stigmas. And like, if you grew up as a male in a household that does not really like respect mental health at all, doesn't really believe in it, then you're going to have trouble seeking out help and expressing your emotions Mm -hmm. and voicing like, hey, I'm not okay. I need help. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just sad, like, thinking about, because our household, we're very open about, you know, mental health, and we're yeah. huge advocates, and on this podcast, huge advocates to do whatever you need to do to be mentally okay. Right. And it's very normal. Everyone has struggles. And it's just sad that there are people out there, especially men, who just don't feel like they can talk about it, because they to, don't yeah, want to be anyone. perceived as weak. Right. And it's just sad because there's so many lives that are lost that could be saved if we just had a society that was more accepting of that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's 2022. Right. Come on. I know. Come on. Seriously. Yeah. There's a source that I looked at called Very Well Mind, and they had a whole article about raising boys in today's world, which was really interesting because, like, I don't have kids yet, and, like, who knows if I'm going to have girls, boys, like, I don't know. You're like, just preparing. Just, preparing. just looking at it. <laughs> I really don't know those. So, like, right. it's good to know. And like, even for girls, but for boys too. Um, a quote from the website is, we need men to be role models for the new generation. It all starts with teaching boys to not be men, but to be humans. Hmm. This should not be a gender issue. Once we make this a human issue, toxic masculinity will fade. Which it, I, Ooh. like, that seriously resonated with me. I mm-hmm. was like, tears are coming Mm -hmm. (laughs) because it's so true it's like why do we have to gender it Mm -hmm. we're all human we all have human struggles right emotion isn't gendered like you said it's it's not it's not it's a it's part of the human experience right like that's how we experience life right by experiencing emotions Mm -hmm. and there's going to be ups and downs and no one's exempt from that 
Right. So yeah, I'm like, I have never thought about it that way, which is an issue. Mm -hmm. But like that, I don't know. That just spoke to me. Yeah, that's how it is in society. Mm -hmm. It's a gendered thing to have emotions and to experience struggles with your mental health. So that was a really good way that he put it. The art, the art, (laughs) (laughs) the article. (laughs) I really cracked up right there. The article also talked about dealing with negative emotions. Like it gave a lot of tips and things that you can do for dealing with the quote negative emotions. You know, like all emotions I feel like are like good in a way, Mm -hmm. you know, like you you can't be happy unless you feel sad at at times. But um, I feel like it's just really important to teach boys and young men so that we can set them up for success in their lives in the future. Because if if you grow up in a household where you're always repressing your emotions, you are going to have issues in your future relationships and like with your relationship with yourself and your kids are going to have issues your kids, and your kids, kids, generational and... trauma mm-hmm. upon generational trauma. Right. Um, I'm going to give some of the tips that they gave. So mm-hmm. they said deep breaths, exercise, which I know a lot of men gravitate towards. Right. A lot of women too. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wish that was me. Same. <laughs> um, sensory techniques and an example they gave is focus on five things you can hear four things you can see Mm -hmm. three things you can touch and so on I I really like that and I'm gonna start using that um but I feel like like I feel like when I was growing up like I was given those kinds of stuff those Mm -hmm. kinds of tools but like I think if I were to ask Jared or like another guy like I don't really think they would yeah be able to recall that yeah I agree so I think it's just like leveling the playing field in a way, mm-hmm. like giving men the same resources that women are given, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Honestly, like, you know how they do maturation in like fifth grade and they teach yeah. you about sex and everything? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was blunt. <laughs> um, they, they need to do that more. They need to, just like they need to talk about more life skills, like budgeting yes. and different stuff like that. Like, Taxes, mm-hmm. how to write a resume yeah like they need to teach real world skills but they need to talk about that more because I know when we were in high school there was a few of the students that committed suicide Mm -hmm. and it's devastating and it's it almost feels like it's like really sad for like a week and then the school moves on and it's like okay anyway right it's like counselors are here for you and then the next day it's like boom nothing yeah and they need to offer a class or they need to like um in like the homeroom type thing, mm-hmm. they need to have stress management techniques yes. and what to do, what how to help a friend, like yes. stuff like that. That needs to be talked about a lot more. So it does, yeah. Like handouts, phone numbers, like the Colorado Crisis Line, mm-hmm. like to where you, you know specific to where you live. Yeah, that is a really good idea. Yeah, I remember in sixth grade, I got a yellow printout. <laughs> I remember this. Um, and it had a like it was like a hundred ways to reduce stress. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was like blowing bubbles, coloring. <laughs> of course you remember those ones. <laughs> la, 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 la. Um, but I remember the, a few techniques and I remember they did give that to us, but it was just like, okay, like, here's this handout. Yeah. Now moving on. It's like And like okay. not really explaining like when to use it, why to use it, like yeah. why to talk about it. And not really explaining like having these feelings. It it's It's kind of like a hard thing to balance, but like having these feelings are normal. You're not alone. Let's get help. Let's talk about it because you're not crazy. Right. You're not insane. You're not weird. Like you're not the only one. Right. Like you are normal because Mm -hmm. really like when you find a community of people who feel the exact same way that you do or feel the same types of things, at least for me, that makes it so much better. And I know it helps a lot of other people too. Yeah. So just making it known that like, hey, I struggle with that too let's talk about it or let's just be there as a support so that if I am struggling one night and I want to hurt myself, then I can call you even if we don't ever talk ever again or we don't talk about anything else. I know I can call you because you know how I feel. Mm -hmm. Just like building up a community. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, And I'm actually taking a holistic health class. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like in that mindset. Yeah. But I feel like the healthcare system too just needs to do a better job of like looking at the body holistically Mm -hmm. because like when you have mental health issues, like it can 
manifest as physical symptoms Mm -hmm. and like it just affects like everything in your body and in your life and just yourself as a whole so I feel like there's just a lot of change that needs to be done in like so many aspects yeah to set up our children and their children and their kids for success Mm -hmm. yeah well I think that was a really great episode it's really good for us to discuss a variety of topics and while this one was heavy um it's something that needs to be talked about. And I really love that you did a man as the feminist highlight Mm -hmm. because we really want to give some love to our male listeners. And because there are male listeners out there, there's like 30% of you that are male. (laughs) So we just want to give some love and we really want to talk about how toxic masculinity, it is a feminist issue. It is definitely. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend and please rate and review this podcast wherever you're listening right now. And go follow us on Instagram. You can find us at Real Talk About Feminism. And you can find us on all of our other platforms if you click the link in our Instagram bio. Thank you guys so much for listening to Real Talk About Feminism.